This is Hafford's Corner. This is the most famous intersection in all of the West. Right where I'm standing is about where the three herbs and Doc Holliday stood on the afternoon of October 26, 1881 and made that fateful decision to take that fateful walk to their rendezvous with destiny. Yeah, come on, let's do it. <laughs> now, here's what might have led up to that. First off, the Earps were considered outsiders. People didn't like them because they came in here. Their first intention was to open a stage line. They got here and they realized there already were two. They had to go to a plan B. Plan B was gambling and they did really well at it. And as such, they started using their winnings to buy up mining claims, water rights, and real estate. The status quo did not care for that. They thought, who do these guys think they are coming in here, taking our money? Number two, the Earps had sided with the North during the Civil War. So now, not only are they outsiders, they're damn Yankees. <laughs> Civil War had just been completed about 15 or 16 years prior. The wounds were still fresh. This was a southern stronghold. So we got damn Yankee northern outsiders coming in here and tapping into our money. Number three, believe it or not, they were Republicans. <laughs> the crooked sheriff and all of his gunslinger henchmen were mostly Democrats. Wow. That's a problem even today. <laughs> so now we got outsider damn Yankee northern Republicans <laughs> coming in here. And then, we got to look at their physical stature. The average man, the average man's shoe size in 1880 was a size seven. People were tiny. Here comes the Earps. They're six feet tall, blue eyes, sandy colored hair. For all intents and purposes, they all look like Brad Pitt. <laughs> So now we got these three Brad Pitt guys that stand head and shoulders above the crowd, literally taking our money. Then, of course, there was a situation that developed between Wyatt and John Behan. And what that involved was this all used to be Pima County. I'm going to stop here for a minute. So by Pima County, that's all of current day Pima County, which goes quite a ways west of Tucson and encompass all of this too, all the way to New Mexico. Big, big county. Uh -huh. Behan had previously been affiliated with that Pima County Sheriff's Department. And at that time, law enforcement uh, was divided in politically in the various compartments. Sh the sheriff primarily was concerned with collecting taxes. If they didn't want to get too involved in law enforcement, they certainly didn't. And that's why in the movie, when Curly Bill's shooting at the moon and they said, what are you going to do about it? The, sh the Sheriff Behan says, no, no, this is a local matter. Yeah, Fred, why don't you go take care of it? He sends poor Fred White out there to his death. Because Behan didn't want to do anything that was dangerous. He was making too much money collecting taxes. His cut on a good year would have been about $60,000 wow. from taxes he collected. Wow. $1.8 million. $1.8 million. So when they chopped off a big chunk of Pima County, renamed it Cochise County, Behan wanted to be sheriff of the richest county in Arizona, but so did Wyatt. So they ran against each other in the general election. Just before the election, Behan was scared he wouldn't get elected. He said to Wyatt, hey buddy, hey pal, what do you say you drop out of the race? I'll win, I'll make you my undersheriff, we'll split the money, what do you say? Wyatt said, sure, why not? Guess what? Behan won, Behan double crossed Wyatt. Wyatt was out, at the very least, three quarters of a million dollars a year in easy money. From that day forward, Wyatt hated Behan. So to get back at him, when Behan's girlfriend, Josephine Sarah Marcus, came to town, mm -hmm. Wyatt stole Behan's girl. That's why. So it comes down now, north, south, money and not Republican, Democrat, tall, short, gunpowder, whiskey, double cross, and a woman. <laughs> Why is it always about a woman? You've, you've grown accustomed to sleeping in the house, so you're not going to answer that. And that's a smart thing. <laughs> We're going this way. All right. So this is still the walk. 
What I am approaching now would have been the rear entrance of the OK Corral. And it would have been long and narrow. And this is not where the gunfight happened. We're going there now. See, it's quite a little distance from the OK Corral. Right about in here would have been here and in the street would have been where that gunfight happened. To his dying day, Wyatt only ever referred to that incident as the street fight in Tombstone because it was in the street. It started in an empty lot behind me. I'm going to show you this picture right here. The empty lot would have been behind this sign. That building over there would be in the location of the Harwood House, a little boarding house where Doc Holliday was sleeping it off the night before. Over here would have been the Fly Photo Studio, that blue building right there. Replicas, because they burned down. But started in this little vacant lot, spilled out into the street. Here's the OK Corral. So it was the street fight in Tombstone. And we think one of the reasons it may have been misnamed the gunfight at the OK Corral is because when Tucson heard about it, they said, what happened? Street fight. What street? Fremont. Give us more. Third in Fremont. Tell us, tell us more. <laughs> Harwood House. No, we need more. OK? Right next to? I don't know, 250 feet or so from the rear entrance of the OK Corral. Bam. Got it. OK. <laughs> OK. We got that! <laughs> as, the, as the way creative people will always do. It'll do that. And once it's in print, you know what happens. That's it. So um, it amazes me that, well, it started off with nine guys. You'll notice nine? at the beginning of the fight in the movie, two guys run away. A guy in a blue shirt first, then Ike Clinton. Mm -hmm. The guy in the blue shirt was uh, Billy Claiborne. Lola? The guy, the other guy's I Clanton, that left seven. And that was four against three. And those seven men stood, stood 12 to 15 feet apart with cannons. And for 30 seconds emptied their guns toward one another with only three fatalities. That's In broad daylight. Is it because of the guns or they were bad shots? I'm thinking everything. I'm thinking scared to death, young. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Billy Clanton was a teenager still. Um, the two McClowries were in their 20s. These are young people, scared to death, facing down these giants that look like Brad Pitt. Right. And um, so they're afraid. Doc Holliday knows he's dying. He doesn't care. So he's very cool and calm and collected. He's hoping to get hit. And um, crappy guns, bad shots. But, um, you know, Morgan, Virgil, and, and Doc Holliday were all wounded, which is another odd and miraculous thing right. that you could get hit with a slug that goes through a filthy vest or shirt first and then into you and without dying from infection a month later. This is before penicillin. If you scratched your arm on a piece of barbed wire in those days, you could lose a limb. Oh, sure. So here's three guys. So that's amazing, too. First off, that not everyone died. And secondly, those that were wounded didn't eventually succumb. Yeah. So that's an amazing, amazing thing. Now, I want to also point out that house over there, that is the approximate location of where we think Addie Borland's house was. So that lady that was an eyewitness to that gunfight had a ringside seat. How could she, how could she be confused? How could anyone be confused? Well, while the people weren't confused, they were politically aligned with the Earps. Much to Behan's dismay, the crooked sheriff. Now, I will want to point out one other thing before we move on. Is that church over there? That church is the Episcopal Church, thought to be the first non Catholic church in the state of Arizona. And that church, we believe, was built primarily with money donated from gambling and prostitution. Oh boy. So the first non Catholic church in the state was built with you know, dirty money. The minister in that church, Endicott Peabody, 
in 1940 in New York City as the man that married Franklin Delano Roosevelt to Ellen. Oh, really? The minister wow. in that little church wow. went back east and was the officiant at FDR's. This is just so wow. thing. Wow, so very interesting. On this spot, the Earp and Clanton factions met on October 26, 1881, to settle the West's most famous feud. Doc Holliday stopped on Fremont Street, a few feet from where indicated here. Frank and Tom McClary finally dropped on Fremont Street. Billy Clanton died where he stood. Virgil and Morgan Earp were wounded. Mm -hmm. 